Hey, how's it going? This is the first session of hiking fitness. We're going to be doing a 10 mile hike. Uh, where I live, I live in the southwest, so we're going to be doing some high desert canyon hiking. Wherever you are, this is a challenge to do uh, a 10 mile hike. So we're going to be doing our distance with a GPS, hiker GPS. This is a Garmin Etrex 20. So we'll let that load up. I'll give you a quick review of what I'm bringing for gear. Bringing a hiking pole. If you see some of my other videos, I carve these. This is an alderwood. You can cut it green here in the mountains. So this is uh, my hiking pole. Bringing a knife. Bringing a set of binos. Drinking up on some coffee here. And I have a mason jar with a uh, wild brew tea. This is a willow, and I'm bringing a water bottle too, and that's basically all I'm bringing. I'm bringing an extra layer, and that's it. I also have my uh, my dogs here with me. Gypsy, good job, Jip. Uh, this is going to be an off trail hike for me. Uh, you can do the the challenge any way you want it. Ten miles. But I'm going to do it off trail. My GPS is already calibrated. It's just lunchtime here. Or just past lunchtime. I'm at 63.69. Sunset is at 5.33. So I have around 5 hours of solid hiking. So you figure 2 miles an hour makes a good pace. Alright, so some quick GPS 101. So I have my... You know when your GPS is working and calibrated with satellites when you have the elevation. When it's like four little dashes here, it means it's searching for satellites. So you can tell it's calibrated. And I go back now. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to go to Track Manager. Current Track. And then I'm going to clear current track. And I'm going to go do that again just to double check it, clear current track. And now when I have current, when I press current track and I go to view map, it's tracking my uh, hike. So you see it's distance zero and it's showing me where I am. And that's basically all I use this GPS for. There's other things in here you can do, but that's all I use it for. The compass. GC. Chips, you ready to go hiking? You ready to go hiking, Chips? Come here, Jip. GC, come here. Come here, bun. Jip. All right, I'm about half mile in, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double check my gear. Make sure nothing is open. Make sure all my stuff is in there. Check my GPS. I'm going to. Close everything up. Good idea to always check your backpack. You know, you don't want any of these pockets kind of flying open and some of your expensive gear to fall out, like knives or like this GPS alone is, I think, 200 bucks. So just double check all my stuff. And I'm going fairly light. I drank three liters of water on the way up here. And as I was packing uh, by the car, so I just have one water bottle, I have my hiking pole. So I'm, I'm going fairly light. And I'm starting on the flat section of the canyon, so I'm leaving the, the climb out for the end. But the climb out, I'm going to catch a road, I think, on the other side. I know there's roads back there, like uh, BLM roads. So I like to start off, you know, with the brush, with the off-trail hiking first. Because at night, if I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to be doing an hour hiking at night or something like that, it would not be fun. It would be disorienting. It's almost like that, uh, like a hedge maze in here with all these trees. So I'm going to leave uh, the back section of the hike on the road. And I'm going to do the first part, which is the hard part out here off trail. All right. So you can see the terrain kind of changing here. We're going to the open section of the canyon. 
And usually when there's an open section of the canyon, there's a draw, which means there's a, you know, like a seasonal creek or something like that. So you can see it's starting to open here. So it'll make like this V here and all the snow that's on the sides will funnel in and make a little creek. And that's called a transition zone. And in that transition zone, there's different sets of trees, different sets of vegetation, all that kind of stuff. So up here, it's kind of, you know, homogenous. It's pinyon pine, it's juniper, it's Mormon tea, and sagebrush. And in that little section where there's water, more consistently, things like cottonwoods will sprout up and different pines or alderwood. Gypsy! Come here, Gigi. That's my Gigi. Come here, bud. Good job, Gigi. All right. So we're coming up on the canyon edge here. Cliff edge. So you have to think, like, how are you going to descend this section? You can see it's all pretty cliffy over there definitely like 20 foot drops 10 foot drops 15 foot drops here you can tell also a bunch of big drops so I want to avoid that you know I don't want to I'm out here by myself so I don't want to start jumping uh, you know anything more than like three or five feet I want to avoid that so I'm just what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk the edge here and then find a spot where I could descend. And once I descend, I'm gonna be in that draw right there. And in that draw, I'm gonna go that way. Do, do a kind of like a counterclockwise loop. And I know there's a BLM road that connects back there where it'll kind of circle me around to my truck. But you can tell there's clouds here today. I live in monsoon country, but it's January, so there's no risk of monsoon. But there is things like snow thunder, and you can tell there's big mountains back there, so the storm clouds come off the mountain. You can tell that's, it looks like a dead juniper, but it's not right here. You can tell it's still alive, even though it's mostly dead. But yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to traverse this canyon on the, on the edge here and find a way to get down. So I'm practically getting on the other side of this uh, canyon traverse. And I'm not even going near these cliff edges. I'm just staying inside because I know how steep it is here. And let me show you just how steep it is here. Definitely getting a little anxious coming up to this edge here. This is around a 100 foot drop. So the Native Americans, they would make cliff houses along these uh, cliff edges here. But you can tell it's just too steep to get up here. So there's definitely no cliff houses here. But in general, you can find cliff houses kind of scattered all throughout this canyon along the walls. All right, I finally found the section where I could descend literally on the other side of this canyon. But you can tell just where I feel comfortable coming down. And that'll get me down there. And I could go further in. Dude, this is a natural shelter right here. These are somewhat rare because it goes really far in. Probably 10, 15 feet in. And it's almost like beach sand right here. Pretty cool. What do you think, Jeps? What's in there? So this would definitely be a good place to shelter in if I got stuck out here 
And I can tell you, there was no storms on the forecast today, but there's a massive cloud coming down the valley. So hopefully I won't get caught out with a storm. But anyway, I'm doing the hard part now of the exploring and off trailing. And when I connect to the road all the way down there, if that storm cloud blocks me in, I could kind of, you know, hurry up the mountain up the road. If I was doing the other way, going down the road and coming back out, I would have a harder time because the storm would catch me out, you know, on a hard part of the canyon. So that's the update. All right, so I've come down the canyon to draw. And I'm catching this uh, BLM road here on the far side of the mountain. You can tell it's not very well used. Definitely hasn't been used in probably two months, I would say. Because if it was, there's a lot of mud here, so you would see tracks, ruts. But that's what I came down. And I'm getting some cloud cover. Which is weird because my radar, my phone app, said sunny. But again, I'm not that worried because it's cold, so no risk of monsoon. And if I did hear something like thunder or see lightning, I would definitely book it back to the truck because that's something you don't want to play around with here is lightning and thunder. But you can tell it's definitely ominous. It's dark. Check this out. This is abandoned rancher fence. It's real old. Kind of beat up. Rancher fence also on the on the safety note is the number one cause of hunting accidents. So a lot of times you'll be you know hunting off trail hiking and you have to cross this thing. And people put their rifle on the side or wherever and it gets messy, they fall, the rifle falls, they drop the rifle, they fall on the rifle. And a shot goes off. So, yeah, I use my hiking stick for this thing too. Like, push it down, pull it up for my dogs. But just be real safe when you cross this because, I mean, even like a, a good stab in your thigh will be bad. You can tell it's all rusty. All right, so I've come down from up there into here and gypsy hi geez and i'm traversing in into that high point of the canyon so i could kind of scope out what's going on on the other side like i know there's private property on the other far side of that ridge or a road probably 15 miles away maybe 20 miles but here it's definitely pretty wild and this is a good place, that's more, more uh, creek draw right there, where I could find things like antlers, you know, like a cool rusty can, some kind of cool artifact. This is the area where I would find it, because this area is definitely remote. So whatever's in this canyon has been here for a while. Yeah, more storm clouds though. I'm a little worried about the storm clouds. I think worst case scenario would be we get cold really fast here. It's 39 degrees. If that storm would block me in, the wind would come in and I'd, I'd probably lose 20 degrees. So it would go from like 39 to 19, somewhere in the teens for temperature. And that would suck. So I have a hat, I have a buff, I have a sweatshirt. But it would still not be fun. But anyway, so I'm just hiking out here exploring it's getting kind of monotonous you know like when you start hiking here it's definitely everything looks real similar but the whole the trick is to you know find cool stuff find a cool photo that's what i'm trying to do some big boulders over there this is all from that creek draw dude so check this out this is a really really rare find here this is a pottery shard look how cool that is y'all that is cool this has been here for 
900 years, something like that. The, the Native Americans that were here, they go from basket maker period to this period where they're storing food and making pottery. But look, from far away, it looks almost like kind of like some kind of debris. And that's the thing with uh, pottery here. It's You'll pick it up and it'll be like a clay pigeon or some kind of garbage. But this right here, look how huge that is, man. It's bigger than my hand. The law is you have to leave it where you find it. So you can pick it up, take a picture of it, and that's it. You have to leave it where you found it. So, but yeah, you can tell this is definitely a pottery shard. Look how cool that is. Or this would be a piece of pottery at this point. This was probably part of a bat, uh, you know, kind of like a bowl. But yeah, this is really cool, man. Look at that. It's gnarly. This is really rare too. Like you'll find those little shards and medium shards, but like a massive piece of pottery like this, it's really rare. So, like I said, you figure this thing has been laying like this right here for 900 years, and I'm the first one to find it. Yeah, check that out, man. And this was found next to that creek draw. So they were probably camping here. They had water. They were setting up shop here, collecting uh, wild edibles like maize, juniper berries, cottonwood berries, that kind of stuff. And, yeah, they had a big piece of pottery, man. I could probably turn this into the museum and they would take it because it's, I think this is really rare, this huge piece of pottery. But what I'll do is I'll just mark my GPS coordinates. I'll leave it where it is because that's the law. And I'll send them a picture if they want it. I'll come back and get it for them. But yeah, this is really cool, man. Look at that. It looks like, you know, it kind of looks like garbage, but you can tell it's, it's something, you know, so you pick it up and but yeah, I've never seen one this big, so really cool, really special. Check this out. This is a mule deer skull, a doe looks like, but who knows, it could be a buck here for a while definitely cool looking old antler Baby coyote, maybe? Definitely sharp canines. Maybe a fox. Baby fox. Kit fox, maybe. Alright. I'm sorry to turn back around. For the return back. You can see here, that's the dark side of the canyon right here. It's covered in snow. The light side of the canyon, which gets sun, has no snow. So if you have a choice, you know, definitely pick the dry side because there's less mud, less slippery, less risk of falling. But yeah, this is perfect weather here for hiking in the southwest. It's around 35 degrees right now. In the summertime, from around May to October, I would say, or late September, this canyon is over 90. Every day, all day, with some monsoon sprinkled in, but mostly the sun rains in the summer here.
Not sure what that is. Two big front teeth. Maybe a bobcat? I don't know. Big eyes. Alright, I'm back on the road here. I followed that utility line up the canyon. And I'm back here on the road. It's about Four fourteen. So I have about an hour and a half of daylight. And now I'm going to get some miles in on this road. I think I have around six miles, maybe, in the canyon. Dropped it all the way from there. Hiked all the way down there. Came back. So now I'm going to be sticking with this road because it's going to, if it gets dark. I can easily just follow the road. If it got dark, if I was all the way in that canyon, my fear, my anxiety would definitely be up being stuck in that canyon because it's all you know, it's all up and down. It's all valley, canyon, valley, canyon, valley. So good to be back here on the road. JC, come here. is comfortable when you're lost because you can follow it to civilization usually and in the desert at night if there's civilization light travels very far so if you find light you know, that's also a good sign in utilities you'll definitely find some light along the utilities Fresh one, young buck, two pointer, fresh piece of antler. It's not brittle, nice and fresh. Check this out. This is uh, a walk down here. I saw this from the the ridge. I saw it last season actually too. But this is an old car wreck. It's been cut in half. The other half's over there. The motor's been pulled. A lot of iron. Pretty cool. I'm not sure what you can salvage off something like this. There's an, an old speaker. The steering wheel. It's cool, huh? So the law is antiquities. Anything after 1979. So if this is like a before 79, it's called an, an antique. And you can't take anything off it. So I'm not sure what year it is. But yeah, it's got a Plymouth with badge on it it's got chrome bumper chrome holding up very nicely over 40 years in the desert in the sun still holding up and there's the some other piece of it over there anyway the sun has set But it'll still be bright here up until six. Six and some change. But this is a cool find. It's amazing how like how much iron and metal were on these old cars, man. Like look at these quarter panels. Solid iron. Everything is just metal. Shock absorbers. Gas tank. The suspension has been ripped here. This is where the leaf spring was, I think. Here to here. It's been sheared off. You have the fuel line here. But yeah, cool. 
Definitely cool how the chrome. Look how cool the chrome looks, man. That's cool. All right, so it's definitely getting cold right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer up. I have a sweater. I'm gonna put that sweater on. I have a sweatshirt. I have a buff. Golden hour, sunset. Good to see the days getting longer in the winter. All right, I'm out of the canyon. I'm on the road. That is Sirius, the star, according to my uh, app. That over there, up there, is Jupiter. Is Juno still around Jupiter? I don't know. I know Cassini, they crashed into Saturn. But Jupiter is right there. Biggest planet in the solar system. As you can tell I'm by, the, I'm by the utility line now. So I'm on the road. And I checked my GPS. And I'm at around eight miles. So I have another maybe mile and a half to my truck. And then if I'm under 10, I'm going to just leave my gear, water up, and I'm going to just hike the road and get 10 miles. Because this is a fitness challenge, and we're getting 10 miles today one way or the other. So it's not too muddy. It's nice and cold. We're going to get 10 miles either way. So we're at eight right now. Walk to my truck, see where we're at. Back on the truck. It's dark. My battery is real low. The flash doesn't want to work. Or the battery is low, so it turns off the flash. So I think I'm over 10 miles. If not, I'll just slack hike around here to do a little loop. But I think I'm over. It feels like I'm over. 10.5 miles. Does it have a lock feature? But anyway, 10.4 miles. So, first hiking fitness challenge done. 10 mile hike. I did it off trail. You can see a lot of exploration, a lot of up and up, up and down. But it's cold, so I gotta start my truck and get out of here.